Yes, Vladimir, I'm doing it right now. Oh, I'm about to. You're sort of interrupting me. I've realized it's been since Christmas, but, you know, I'm sorry. <sighs> Alright, well, let me get off the bloody phone with you so I can do it. Ideas. Right, so uh, I'm here and I'm doing this per Vladimir's request. I really don't know how all of this works. I, I have this list of questions that Vladimir sent me and it's like I'm bloody mile long. So uh, I'll get to that, but I guess Vlad says I'm supposed to like talk about my country or something and like share words from my language, but I, I mean... <laughs> I'm English. Everyone knows my language, or should. I guess I'll do slang instead. But before I do that, I have to talk about my country. So what am I going to talk about? I'll talk about the flag! Now most of you guys probably know my flag as the Union flag, which is the one on my shirt. Ignore that for now, okay? Uh, the one on my shirt. It's my flag, but it's not just mine. It's my and my brother's flag. Well, with the exception of Killian, which I'll get to in a moment. The design of this flag that everyone knows as the UK flag came into official existence in 1801 when my brothers and I signed the Union Act that basically created the United Kingdom. And at the time, Ireland and Northern Ireland were the same thing and, well, not the same thing, but they were together like as a country and uh, Wales and I were together as a country at the time. And then there was Scotland. So, the Union flag is made up of all three of what our flags looked like at the time. This is a lot to explain, <laughs> more than I anticipated, okay? Uh, yeah, Union flag. Can we put like a little thing up here to show the flags as I'm talking about them? Probably, okay. So the Union flag is uh, sort of, the design is sort of a mashup of those flags, which is mine, as in England's flag, which is the one behind me, and the one on my necklace, and I don't know, maybe we'll throw it up here, I don't know. Scotland's flag, which is this, and uh, what Ireland's flag looked like at the time, which was this. Right, so if you put all of those three together, this is kind of what you get. Then we also have sort of our individual flags, and mine is this one, which is also known as St. George's Cross, who is the patron saint of England, and like Liam's flag is St. Andrew's Cross, because St. Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland, and what used to be Ireland's flag is the cross of St. Patrick, who of course is the patron saint of Ireland. <sighs> then you're talking about the Irish independence, which made Killian his own country, as the Republic of Ireland, which is not part of the UK anymore, and that's why his flag isn't anywhere on this flag. Uh, in case you're wondering why Driston's dragon, the Welsh dragon, isn't on the Union flag. It's because at the time, Driston and I, uh, as, a, as two Wales and England were sort of a together thing at the time, politically. Right, so uh, moving on to this language thing then. So like I said, uh, I just assume that most people watching this already speak English, so I'm not going to do anything silly like teach you a really long word that you probably don't know because who cares? So instead, I'm going to teach you some British slang. In the UK, we have slang for everything. We have so much slang that you could probably write a series, not just one book, but a series of books about our slang. And clearly that would take me forever to, to teach all of you all of that. So instead, I thought I picked out a few words that I thought I would uh, tell you what the meaning of it all is in case you don't already know. Right, so I think the most popular or most used 
of our slang is of course the word bloody. I use that word like it's going out of style. And it's really basic, it just, it's, you can basically take any word, unless it's a noun, and replace it with the word bloody. It can mean, it can take the pl place of the word damned, it can take the place of the word fucking. Yeah, you can use bloody in any bloody sentence. You can pretty much bloody up any bloody sentence you bloody want. And it still makes sense! Uh, obviously, a lot of people hear the word bloody in the expletive bloody hell, which I also happen to use quite a lot. Another one of my favorite words is bollocks. And that literally means balls. As in testicles, okay? Uh, it, it's supposed to mean, like, bullshit. Uh, it's rubbish, it's nonsense. It's total shit is what bollocks means when said in, in, in a sentence. And it's usually not even really said in a sentence. It's usually just like, oh, bollocks. Uh, which brings me to bugger and bugger off, which are pretty similar to bollocks, but it doesn't have the literal meaning of balls. Like, you could say, oh, bugger. Or if you want someone to go away, if you want them to fuck off, you say bugger off. And pissed, or piss artist. This one confuses Alfred a lot, because in America, when you say someone is pissed, it means they're angry, it means they're mad. Over here, it means you're drunk. Therefore, a piss artist is basically a lazy drunk. Blimey. Or sometimes it's said, like, core blimey. It's basically just another expression of, like, excitement or anger or surprise, like, oh, blimey, I can't believe I'm doing an episode of Ask Romania. Git is a general insult. If someone calls you a git, they're calling you an idiot. And git goes along the same lines as, like, sod or knob or wanker. They're all kind of the same thing, with the exception of wanker, which orig originally, if, if someone w called you a wanker, they were saying that you, you, you masturbate all the time, okay? But that isn't really what it means anymore, people just use it. And my final word of British slang for this episode is shite, which really doesn't have any special meaning, it's just a fancier way of saying shit. Alright! So now that I've got all that taken care of, uh, we'll move on to this incredibly long list of questions. Wait a minute, did... <laughs> I wasn't aware that other nations would be asking me questions. I'm not even sure if this is really Germany or Italy. I don't... I don't really know. Um, Vladimir didn't warn me of this. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just read it. I'll just read it. This is mine and Feliciano's YouTube channel. We share it. Okay. Now here is my question. Why in the hell do you change me into a werewolf every Halloween? I'm getting sick and tired of it and it's scaring Feli a lot. Also stop doing it on him even though he doesn't mind it because he thinks his werewolf form is way cuter than mine. And Feliciano has a question. Okay, f hang on. Before we get to the Feliciano portion of this question, I have far greater things to worry about around Halloween than randomly changing other nations into werewolves or what have you, okay? <laughs> Halloween is a very interesting time for me, and while yes, I do tend to do quite a lot of magic around Halloween, I guarantee you that I am not wasting my time changing other nations into random magical creatures. So, let's move on to the Italy portion of the question. I know you do a lot of magic, but have you accidentally opened a portal to another world? Because I keep seeing an evil version of myself in the mirror and it's scaring me. To my knowledge, I have not opened a portal to another world or dimension. That's sort of something that does tends to doesn't tend to go unnoticed. Uh, I think if that were a problem, we would have already known about it. And by we, I mean my brothers and I. We would have sensed that kind of thing. If you are seeing evil versions of yourself in the mirror, then my suggestion would be to put down the wine and go to bed. 
how did you meet Oliver, or has he always been with you? Oliver has pretty much been with me my entire life. I think I was like two or three, I could barely talk when he uh, first came to me, I was a baby. And don't ask me how, you know, what circumstances, where were you, who were you with, what were you doing, I don't remember. I was, it was so long ago, I was so young, and I really, I really don't remember. So pretty much he's been here my whole life. Why do you hate Tony? You mean um, Alfred's alien, right? You know, from a parent's perspective, I, I, I worry a little bit about Tony because I don't know Tony. Tony is apparently an alien from out of bloody space. And now he's hanging out with my son. Like, I'm a little, I'm a little bit leery of him for that alone. And, you know, then the fact that all he ever says to me is fucking and limey. So, bastard something. I don't know. What are, oh dear, what are your thoughts about Driston being a vampire? Driston was missing for hundreds of hundreds of years, and when he finally came back he was a complete asshole, and no one could figure out why. Then come to find out he was a vampire that whole time. So from my perspective originally, he had run off with the vampires and had said fuck you to the rest of us, and would rather be with the vampires. I didn't understand really the whole situation. So yeah, at first I was extremely upset about it. But now, now that I know more about the situation and, you know, Dristin and I have ha had a few long chats about the whole thing, I, um, I don't mind really, honestly. I mean, my best friends are bloody vampires, so... The vampirism itself doesn't bother me at all. It's all the other shit that came along with it. When fighting wars with Francis, did you ever overlook the situation and regret it and realize how much you care for him? <laughs> Every bloody time. Unfortunately, I was in complete denial for many hundreds of years, so I never did anything about it. Definitely, there was always that moment of when I would stop and realize what I was doing and feel really bad about it, but I was too much of a pussy to, uh, to do anything about it. We know you love Alfred and Matthew, but what are some things they do that just get on your nerves? Stuff like leaving lights on, leaving clothes on the floor, etc. I haven't lived with either of them in a long time, but... <laughs> When they were younger, they were little heathens, particularly Alfred, and he would constantly do things like that, leave his clothes all over the floor and that kind of thing, and, you know, just things that kids do that drive normal people crazy. I think the biggest thing that would used to get on my nerves with those two was when they would fight, and it was usually Alfred picking on Matthew, and Francis or myself, or both, would have to get in the middle so they would stop. And I mean, I mean, fighting like pulling hair and, and screaming and... Since Prussia trained America's army to fight in the... Oh, is this really a, a revolution question? Since Prussia trained America's army to fight in the... American Revolution... That's hard for me to say. How does that make you feel when you think of past relationships between yours and Prussia's country when he existed? I've never really gotten along much with Gilbert to begin with, like since ever. Aside from that, he wasn't the only other country out there that helped Alfred kick my ass, so I really don't care. I don't care much about Gilbert, ever. I was far more broken up over the fact that Francis helped Alfred so much uh, during that particular war. And we're going to move on to the next question. It is only a personal opinion, but would you say you stole America and Canada from Native America at their young age when they were your colonies. Do you know if America or Canada remembers Native America being their motherland? Wow, you guys really have some personal questions, don't you? Okay. No, I wouldn't say that I stole them, and that's a long story to get into, but 
I mean, I know that you guys probably saw it from the perspective of that we just found them, but that wasn't exactly the case. Native North America was their mother. Frances and I both knew her very well. That's all I'll really say about it, I think. As far as if they remember her, I'm pretty sure they remember her fondly. At least I hope they do. Hello, Arthur. I'm the doc- the doctor. Really? I'm the doctor. I came here to ask if you'd like to be my companion. We can go anywhere you want. If you do say yes, where do, where do you want to go first? Wait a minute. Why would the doctor contact me over the internet? You have a TARDIS. Just come here. But let's just pretend that he was busy and uh, had to send me this message. Would you like to be my companion? B who would say no to that? Honestly, you're mad if you say no to that question. Where do you want to go first? Where would I want to go first? Stonehenge. I would like to see Mum make Stonehenge. Failing that, or, you know, maybe in addition to that, uh, I think it would be really cool to go to, like, a planet somewhere way far away and, like, 20,000 years into the future. That'd be pretty cool. Who is your favorite doctor from Doctor Who? Who's my favorite doctor? That's like asking who's my favorite child. Yeah, I can't, I can't answer that. I love, I love all the doctors. Obviously, uh, the tenth doctor is one of my favorites because he's one of everyone's favorites, let's be honest. I like the eleventh doctor a lot. I really like the ninth doctor a lot, even though he was only there for one season. I like the fourth doctor a lot. I like him a lot. I like them all, okay? They're all my favorite. If you were to ever have a cooking show, what would it be called and what would you make? Well, first of all, I don't think anyone would allow me to have a cooking show. I don't know what I'd call it, but I would make... I would make trifles and scones and crumpets and biscuits and I would make sweet things. Are you a Time Lord? Congrats on 50 years of Doctor Who. I love your eyebrows. 50 years of Doctor Who, yes. Amazingness right there. The eyebrows, not so much. Are you a Time Lord? I wish I was a Time Lord, but I am not. What do you think of Peter Capaldi? Want to be Whovian BFFs? I'm not sure what Whovian BFFs means, but... Yeah, why not? Um, as far as Peter Capaldi goes, I'm really actually very excited to see him as the Doctor. I've seen him in, you know, other shows and stuff, and plus he's been on Doctor Who before. Obviously not as the Doctor. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. These months that are dragging by before it premieres again is driving me absolutely nutters. Why does Driston have very long hair? What do you think of the modern series Sherlock? Why does Driston- I don't know why Driston has very long hair, because he likes it, I guess. As far as Sherlock goes, uh, I know it's very blasphemous of me, but I, I actually haven't seen a whole lot of it yet. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I just haven't had time to watch it, but from what I have seen and from what I know of it, it's bloody brilliant. I was dared to ask this one, but when you got those sexy cat ears, after that spell in school with Vlad, what happened when Vlad saw you with them? He laughed his ass off for about 20 minutes as I screamed at him to fix it. Which he didn't, by the way, and it, they wore off a few hours later, but yeah, he laughed his ass off. What do you think of 2P France? I don't understand this whole 2P thing of us. I don't understand it. So, uh, I don't know what I think of 2P France. I don't care. What is your opinion on France's 2P self? Which I pretty much just answered. And what do you think about him and your, your 2P self being together? Again, I don't know much about this 2P thing. I don't care about it. It doesn't affect my life. So I don't know and I don't really care. I mean, I guess if there are two alternate versions of us that want to do, you know, be together, that's great, I guess. Would you rather never see Flying Mint Bunny and the rest of your creature friends or never see Francis and never drink tea again? Wow, that's a tough one. In comparison with 
Oliver and the others and Francis, tea can go fuck itself. And I love tea, okay? But in compared to those other two things, tea is not that important on my importance scale. Basically, it would be would I rather never see Oliver and, uh, you know, the unicorn and such again, or would I rather never see Francis again? And I don't really know how, how to answer that question because both of those things have pretty much always been in my life. So I can't really imagine life without one or the other. Have you ever spoken to Miss Monaco? Yes, I speak with Marceline quite frequently. She comes to visit every now and then. When I go to Frances's house, she's usually around. Uh, I wouldn't exactly call us like best friends or anything. We don't really hang out. Yeah, I, she's a sweet girl. I like her. Why are you such a wet blanket? And what do you think of Vlad and Alfred's relationship? Pretty sure I answered the why are you such a wet blanket question before. And my answer was, you'd have to ask Killian, because he's the one that always calls me that. As far as uh, Alfred and Vlad's relationship was concerned, I was very worried about it at first, because, you know, I, I, I just don't want Alfred to get hurt, and I know how potentially dangerous the situation is. So at first I was very against it, and I, was, I did not approve whatsoever. But now that it's been a few years and I realize how much they really do care about each other, I am, I'm okay with the whole thing. The whole thing makes me still a little bit nervous uh, around Halloween. Can you describe Flying Mint Bunny in three words? Flying Mint Bunny. How about magical, cute, and uh, helpful? How are you getting along with your brothers? Have you met any of Romania's kids and what do you think of them? I'm actually getting along with my brothers quite well in the last uh, few months, which is practically unheard of. I'm a little bit worried. I assume by Vlad's kids you mean Koshmina, Radu, and Cezar. Yes, I have met them. Uh, they usually accompany Vladimir to, you know, the Olympics every two years. So I have met them. What do I think of them? They're all right. I mean, I, I've never really hung out with them. I mean, they're, they're polite. How do you feel about Vlad dating Alfred, which I've already answered? How have your former and current monarchs reacted to the fact that you prefer men? It depends on the monarch, and I've had a lot, so I'm not gonna, like, go through the list. Overall, uh, they, they, they don't really care. They haven't really cared. Um, that's sort of, you know, my personal life and not so much in relation to national affairs. Don't get me wrong though, you know, there have been some that didn't approve and others that were very supportive and very, you know, approving. When world meetings are in your country, do you cook or have someone else do it for you? Because some people question your culinary skills. I'm aware of that. Thank you for the reminder that I get constantly every day. Yeah, I don't cook at world meetings. I usually talk Francis into doing it. But I cheat because I have him cook <laughs> English meals or UK-based foods rather than French cuisine. And he sort of hates it, but he does it because he loves me. Is there any particular reason why you cannot cook well? Were you cursed as a child to make horrible, bland food? Or is it just that you can't cook? Has France been trying to teach you how to cook? If there is a reason why I am a nightmarish disaster in the kitchen, I have no idea what it is. I don't know why. I don't do it on purpose. I, su I, I suppose I just can't cook. I don't know. Francis has tried teaching me how to cook in the past, but, um... It either is a complete waste of time, or it turns into something not related to food at all. What's your favorite spell to use? I don't know, I have a lot of favorites. I like healing spells a lot, like protection spells, because they're very useful. But I don't really have, like, a number one favorite. Cursing. That's fun. It's not something you should do often, though, because, you know, it usually bites you in the ass in the end, but... Yeah, cursing is fun. I remember you taught America how to use the ring and even told him he had magical capability or something along those lines. Would you ever try to teach him magic? And if so, what kind of magic? Alfred has sort of 
inherited magical abilities that he is entirely unaware of. At least to my knowledge, is entirely unaware of. Would I ever teach him magic? Absolutely. If he uh, if he asked me to, I absolutely would. Although I think that he probably want Vlad to teach him at this point. But if you know he did come to me and want me to teach him some sort of magic, I would absolutely teach him healing magic and protective magic because that sort of thing is extremely helpful and uh, necessary considering he hangs out with vampires all the time. Again, that isn't a dig on Vlad or anyone else in the, in the family down there, it's just that vampires are naturally more dangerous than humans. Can you talk to us about your relationship with your mother and brothers? My mother, I don't honestly really remember a whole lot because she was killed when I was very young so really all I remember of her is I remember her singing us to sleep and reading us fairy tales and she was very pretty that's all I really remember uh, my brothers let's see Dristan and I obviously had issues for many many years before Dristan was kidnapped um when we were in school and when we were you know little kids Dristan and I were pretty close and especially in school we would uh hang out a lot that's why it was extremely traumatizing when he disappeared for me since he's come back and all that truth has come out now we're we're on our way to uh, repairing the centuries damaged relationship that we had liam and i have sort of had our moments throughout you know history of where we would fight a lot like cats and dogs but we we always uh sort of made up in the end because liam is the type of person who will pick on you and pick on you and pick on you and pick on you and pick on you but then at the end of the day he'll be like oh, i'm just kidding i love you caleb and i again caleb and i are not like liam and i actually with the exception of caleb picks on me but he doesn't pick on me quite as much as liam does and the other thing about caleb is and he shares this trait with killian and that is the fact that they are both the biggest smart asses I have ever known in my entire life, which brings me to Killian, and Killian is sort of my rock. Killian saves me. I rely on Killian a lot to, you know, sort of save me from myself. I probably take advantage of Killian quite a lot, actually. Which nation would you consider your best friend? Well, aside from Francis and my brothers, who don't really count because you know, their family. Vladimir is pretty much my best friend and has been for a very long time. What is your fondest memory of when Alfred was a child? I think the very fondest memories that I have of Alfred's childhood are the uh, the moments where, you know, I'd put him to bed and, and read him a story and, and sing him a lullaby and, and, and he'd be all cute and sleepy and and then I'd do magic for him and he could see it and he really liked it and would giggle about it and those are the really, I guess, fondest memories that I have. <sighs> and now saying it out loud, I realize how bloody ridiculous that sounds, so we'll move on. If Ivan were to appear at your front door and say that he knows that the magic club put a spell on Belarus so that she would chase after him, what would you do? I would probably react in the same way that I react every time Ivan randomly shows up on my door with uh, uh, no explanation, and that is to scream and run away and curse him in the other room. I was just wondering why you and your femme version are so scary and are so bad at cooking. I sort of already explained why, I mean, I, like, I don't know why I'm so bad at cooking, it just is something that's just the way it is. As far as being scary, I don't, I don't know, I didn't, I was unaware that I was frightening. If you could go back in time and change anything that's happened between you and your brothers, would you? If yes, what would it be? Oh, of course I would go back and change Dristan ever going missing to begin with. I mean, there are a few other things I could think of that I would change too, like, you know, all the wars and stuff that we've had, but uh, I think the number one thing would be the whole Dristan disappearing thing. Have you told Francis about everything that happened with Dristan? 
How did he react if you did? Of course I told Francis about all that. He was sort of there to take the brunt of my yelling and screaming and ranting about the whole thing as it was happening. Francis is not very happy with Tristan and hasn't been for quite some time now. He's protective of me, I guess. He doesn't want me to get hurt anymore by the situation. Again, another country, apparently. Like, I don't understand. From one to infinity, how awesome am I? Negative infinity, dear, okay? Are you mad that Romania made you do this video? It's not something I would have done uh, by myself if he hadn't have asked me to do it. I'm not entirely thrilled about doing it, but I guess it's not that bad. Not angry about it. If you had a chance to go back in time and alter something from that time, what would it be? Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot that I would like to go back and change. I would like to go back and change how I have treated Francis throughout the centuries. I'd like to go back and change how I reacted to Alfred wanting me to leave and all of that. I mean, there's a lot. I'm also a Whovian, so I know that trying to go back and change things that have happened in your past isn't exactly the best thing to do. So I, if given the opportunity, I wouldn't do it, but I would think about it for sure. And there would be a lot to think about. What if Francis or Alfred were to disappear, be annexed, or die, what would you do to save them from disappearing or dying? I would use magic, and if that didn't work, I don't know, I'd think of something else. When Alfred was little, was he ever interested in learning about your magic? Also, I know England is famous for drinking tea, so what's your favorite type of tea? Also, what was it like being in Russia for the Olympics? Was Alfred ever interested in learning about my magic? When he was little, yes. When he was very little, he was fascinated by it and wanted to know all about how to do this, that, and the other. And I always told him, no, darling, you're too young. You know, when you get a little bit older, then I'll teach you. And then he got a lot a bit older, and I never taught him. And then he sort of lost interest in the whole thing. Uh, favorite type of tea? Earl Grey. I drink that shit all day long. Except in the morning, when I drink English breakfast tea. What was it like being in Russia for the Olympics? Honestly, it wasn't that bad. I thought it would be, I don't know, really scary or something, but it, it really wasn't that bad. Then again, I really didn't do a whole lot outside of showing up at the events I was supposed to show up to, and I kind of just stayed in my uh, hotel room the majority of the time, <laughs> unless I had to be somewhere for an event or something. How many medals did you get and how frustrated are you? Not many and extremely. We only got one gold, one silver, and two bronze. I'm just sort of disappointed in uh, how not well we did at uh, Sochi. Why are you so against Ivan being with Yao? Why is your cooking shit? Well, I think I've already answered the cooking question like twice already. Why am I against Ivan being with Yao? I'm only worried about that because of Leon. Yeah, okay, he's not technically my kid, but yeah, I'm just worried about it from a parent's point of view. It isn't that I don't trust Yao, because I know that Yao would never let anything happen to Leon. You know, Yao can handle himself around Ivan. It's just, I just worry about these things, okay? Are you now accepting of Alfred's relationship with Vlad? Yeah, like I said before, I'm, I'm, I was not accepting of it in the beginning, but I am now, for the most part. Why is your food horrible? I feel like there's a recurring theme here. Again, I sort of already answered this. All of my food isn't horrible, okay? Like, I can make good things. Sometimes. Maybe. What is your favorite color? Blue. I'm gonna go with blue. And I like red a lot, too, though. Why can't you understand French hardly at all? I do understand French. I just pretend like I don't. Why does Flying Mint Bunny get drunk when you get drunk and can handle it way better than you? Oliver and I are connected on a spiritual and magical level. What happens to me, he is also affected by. If I get hurt, he gets hurt. If I get drunk, he gets drunk. If I'm sleepy, he gets sleepy. I don't know what makes you think that he can handle his, his alcohol better than me. I mean, when he's drunk, he falls over every five seconds. 
That's how I know. That's how I know when I'm getting really drunk is when he starts falling over. Why did you abandon poor baby Sealand when he was a baby? I really don't feel comfortable discussing why, uh, the reasons why I abandoned him, which I really don't consider that what I did, but I know he does, so, um, yeah, we just won't talk about that. About the unicorn thing, how are you still a virgin? Haven't you fucked or gotten taken over by Francis a million times? Yeah, I'm completely not a virgin and haven't been for a long time. The idea that only virgins can see unicorns is a complete myth. How do you feel about nobody acknowledging your invention of the sandwich? I think it's bollocks. That's how I feel about it. I think it's bollocks. I obviously made it. Oh, but your cooking's so terrible, Arthur. You couldn't have possibly invented something as amazing as the sandwich. No, I did. Deal with it, the rest of the world. I invented the sandwich. Do you have a favorite memory involving your brothers? And what exactly do you do with all of your embroidery? Favorite memory with my brothers is probably when we were all kids and, and there were no wars going on yet and uh, no one had, had invaded us yet and we were all happy and frolicking through the fields and the forests and such and doing magic whenever we felt like it and yeah, that, that was the best time ever. What do I do with all of my embroidery? Honestly, a lot of it I just sort of pack up in boxes and they just hang out in my closet. I have like boxes of finished embroidery in my closet. But I do have, the ones that I really like in the end, I, I, I put up on the walls in my house sometimes. And, but most of them I just do and then I throw them in a box and I forget all about them. How did you feel when it, well, why, why, why all of these questions about that. How did you feel when America wanted independence and wanted a revolutionary war with you? Were you sad, angry? How do you bloody think I felt? Oh, what kind of question is that? How do you think I felt? Of course I was angry and sad. My son was kicking me out and telling me he didn't need me anymore. How the bloody hell do you think I felt? Use your bloody imagination. What would you do or react if Gilbert or any other nation's pet raped your flying bunny and is now pregnant? Again, what kind of question is that? Uh, we're not talking about that. First of all, I don't feel comfortable talking about rape, so I'm not even going to mention that. Yeah, no, I don't really see this happening ever. What does France do that you hate, but you don't want him to stop doing because you secretly love it? Well, the whole smothering me thing, I guess, counts. Because, you know, I try to act like I don't like that and I hate it, but that's not true at all. His laugh, too. I, I, I'm, I'm constantly picking on him about his laugh and how it drives me crazy, but actually, I, I love it. Does Vlad know black magic like you do, or does his magic cover that area as well as some things your magic can't do? Yeah, Vlad's magic is a lot different than mine because it's vampiric magic. I mean, he has similar spells that he can do, like, that I can do, like, you know, healing and, and protection and, and that sort of thing. His magic is, is sort of like an entirely different genre of magic. And my magic isn't really black magic anyway. I mean, yeah, I do curses and I do refer to it a lot as black magic, but it's it's really not that dark. There is magic out there that exists that is much darker than anything I know how to do or would want to know how to do. How is Canada? He hasn't shown up for a while and I think everyone ignores him and I feel bad, so how is he? He's been around. He was at the Olympics. Francis actually spends a bit more time with Matthew than I do, so Francis would be a better person to ask about Matthew, but I think for the most part, Matthew's fine. If you could be any animal, what would it be? If I could be any animal, I would clearly be a unicorn. 
Have you played or watched Pokemon? If so, what is your favourite Pokemon? If you could, what Pokemon would you be? I have not played Pokemon, I've not watched it. I have seen Alfred play it a lot. If I could be one, uh, it would be the same one as my favourite. And that would be uh, Rapid Dash because you, he, he evolves into a unicorn. What are your favorite foods other than yours? Like Chinese, French, Italian, what is your favorite? I really like Chinese food and some French food I like. Some French stuff I won't touch ever, like escargot, for example. But there are other French dishes that I do really like. I like Italian all right, except Italian is usually pretty spicy, so I don't do much Italian. What if Romano came up to you and said, please fuck me? <laughs> what is your reaction and answer? My reaction to that would be, Levino, darling, uh, I'm pretty sure you are beyond wasted right now if you are asking me a question like that. So I think what you should do is go on home to your little Spaniard and screw him and if you can't manage that then you could just maybe take a nap because you're good at that too but i think you're a little bit too drunk right now because you're not speaking or seeing clearly so maybe you should go home what would you do if italy and romano started fucking each other right in front of you and act like you're not there well they're brothers so i really don't think that would happen ever and if it did i would probably vomit because their brothers, then I would walk away. Why won't you admit that I'm awesome? My name is Alita, and my and if my boyfriend Luciano just kissed you, what would you do to me and Luciano? I have no idea who you are, so therefore I won't admit you're awesome because I don't know who you are. Secondly, if some random person just came up to me and kissed me, I would probably slap them across the face and start an argument and or physical fight with them because you really just shouldn't walk up to someone you don't know and who doesn't know you and kiss them. It's sort of rude. Are you still nervous about Alfred dating Vlad? Again, I've already sort of answered this question. Uh, yes, I'm still nervous about it, but uh, not nearly as nervous as I was, you know, a year or two ago. What would you do if another vampire turned Alfred and he completely hated being a vampire, but the other vampire made the change permanent? Unless it's a very rare case, such as my own or Alfred's case, changing into a vampire is already permanent. Well, it depends on who the vampire is. If it's Vlad, then, you know, I'd wring his neck, but I'd be willing to listen to an explanation to a point, but if it was some other random vampire that, that I don't know, I would ring up Tim and he and I would take a little vacation to wherever this vampire was and we would kill him repeatedly. And then we'd figure out, we'd have to figure out some way to, to fix Alfred. How did you feel about the potion incident when Vlad knocked Alfred out with a potion on his birthday and took him to his house? How do you feel about Hungary? Yeah, that wasn't really a potion, I don't think. I think he was just drunk. How do you feel about Hungary? I'm not a fan. She has a reputation of treating people I care about like shit. She is constantly fighting with Vladimir, and she has been known to not treat Francis particularly well either, so therefore I am not a fan of Hungary. How do you think Dristen will adapt to being back home considering how much things have changed politically and socially in the time that he was missing? I have no idea. I, I mean, I'm a little bit worried. I think it will take a long time for things to get 100% back to normal. But with that said, I do think it's possible to get back to, you know, the way things were. Or at least some variation of that. What are your plans for getting through Halloween, specifically dealing with Dristen's bloodlust? Oh, you know what? I didn't think of that one. That could be a problem. What we'll probably end up doing is just avoiding... Dristen and I will avoid each other like the plague around Halloween because Halloween is a little bit crazy time of year for me anyway. With Dristen on top of that, it's, it, it'd be madness. So yeah, we'll probably just avoid each other for that entire month. Have you ever beaten Alfred at a video game? If so, which one? 
Yeah, I don't think I've ever beaten Alfred in a video game. I've played video games with him before, and he always wipes the floor with me. Did you know Elisabetta hit Francis with a frying pan once? Yes, I'm aware of this incident, and it is a significant factor in why I am not a fan of Hungary. Did you know Shakespeare back in the day? If you did, what was he like? Yes, I knew Shakespeare back in the day, and he was fabulous! Oh, I can't even begin to describe how amazing of a person he was, okay? Did you know that after the whole getting kidnapped by the Bad Touch trio in college, and you destroyed the pictures, Vlad used magic to make them have bad luck, and then got the negatives? I don't think he still has them, but I just wanted to know if you knew. I'm so confused by all of that. I assume you're talking about the time in school and the Bad Touch Trio kidnapped me and took questionable pictures of me and in a Magic Club meeting we got them back and I burned them and... Yeah, I was aware of the fact that Vladimir got the rest of the pictures that they had and whatnot and I'm only aware of it because Vladimir and I sort of had an argument about it because I don't think he should have threatened them or any of that. I think the whole thing was just bloody ridiculous and I just wanted the whole thing to be over. What are your thoughts on Peter Pan? The legend, not the Disney movie. I love Peter Pan. I love the legend and the Disney movie, although I prefer the legend because the, it was a, an originally a Scottish story. Yeah, I love Peter Pan. Russian chocolate. Any thoughts? Apparently Alfred thinks it's bloody orgasmic, but to me chocolate is chocolate is chocolate. Who is your favorite leader? That's a tough one because I, ha I have a few favorites. Queen Victoria was a favorite of mine. Her and I were extremely close. Queen Elizabeth I and I were extremely close. Queen Elizabeth II and I are extremely close. So those are probably my uh, top three favorites. What were your first thoughts on Joan of Arc when you saw her for the first time and what were your thoughts after you met her? Well when I first met her I openly laughed because she's a girl. I thought it was hilarious that Francis said, oh, you have to have a girl fight for you. Uh, you're, you're, you're too weak and stupid to fight for yourself, so you had to get a girl to do it for you. After that, and after, you know, everything she did, I grew to really respect her because she was a really good warrior and everything. Unfortunately, my opinion on her had, had no way in over her fate because... My leaders decided it was so. What is your favorite non-English dish? Well, I talked a little bit earlier about how I like Chinese a lot. My favorite non-English dish of all time is creme brulee. I love creme brulee, and I realize that's French. I get it when I'm a good boy, and I do things that Francis likes. What would be your favorite Queen song? Again, that's a really hard one. I love all of Queen songs. I got it. My favorite Queen song is Under Pressure. You know why? Because David Bowie is in it and, it's, and sings it with Freddie Mercury and so therefore it is pretty much one of the best songs to ever have been recorded. What are your thoughts on the Hunger Games series? Do, I haven't seen it. I haven't read it. Uh, it's one of Alfred's people that wrote that so I don't, I don't even really know a whole lot about it. Out of all of Jane Austen's novels, which one is your favorite? It's a tie between Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. It's a lot of ands in one sentence. <laughs> I don't know if this is a touchy subject or not, but what are your thoughts on each of the six wives of Henry VIII? Oh, that would take me forever to talk about all that. That could be an entire episode. I mean, it's not really a touchy subject, a bit, but not really. I don't really care to talk about King Henry VIII at all, really. Right, so. I've answered all the questions I was given. That means I'm done now, right? The next time this Ask Romania thing pops up on your YouTube, uh, it will be Vladimir again, not me. I'm sure that Vladimir will probably ask me to do another one of these in the future, so I probably will. So, you know, I guess if you have more questions, you can ask them. And uh, ask Vlad your questions instead, too, because he likes doing this. He does this much better than I do, I think. Yeah, that's it. I'm out of here. Exterminate! Exterminate!
パーからウィンザー・ナーナウォンパー・トーラダ・インテラ・カンテナサンタラ・バーダラ・ウィンザー・ナーナウォンパー・トーラダ・インテラ・カンテナメラメラと焼き尽くせ我の呼びかけに答え今を叶う